A lot of people are talking about the ethics of deep learning. Are we actually creating something that's good for humanity or ultimately bad for humanity? So let's go there. Now, I'm not going to preach to you about sentient robots taking over the world. I mean, maybe that will be a problem 50 years from now, maybe even sooner. But for the immediate future, it's more subtle ways in which deep learning can be misused that you should concern yourself with. And as someone entering the field, either as a researcher or a practitioner, it is up to you to make sure that this powerful technology is used for good and not for evil. And sometimes this can be very subtle. So you might deploy a new technology in your enthusiasm, and it might have unintended consequences. And that's mainly what I want to talk about in this lecture, understanding unintended consequences of the systems you're developing with deep learning. First of all, it's important to understand that accuracy doesn't tell the whole story. So we've evaluated our neural networks by their ability to accurately classify something. And if we see like a 99.9% .9 accuracy value, we congratulate ourselves and pat ourselves on the back. But often, that's not enough to think about. First of all, there are different kinds of errors. There's what we call a type 1 error, which is a false positive. That's when you say that something is something that it isn't. For example, maybe you mis misinterpreted a tumor that was measured by some um, you know, biopsy that was taken from a breast sample as being malignant. And that false positive of a malignant cancerous result could result in real unnecessary surgery to somebody. Or maybe you're developing a self-driving car and your camera on the front of your car sees a shadow from an overpass in front of you. This has actually happened to me, by the way, and slams on the brakes because it thinks that the road is just falling away into oblivion, into this dark mass, and there's nothing for you to drive on in front of you. Both of those are not very good outcomes. They could be worse, mind you. I mean, arguably, it's worse to leave a cancer untreated than to have a false positive or one, or it might be worse to actually drive off the edge of a cliff than to slam on your brakes, but these could also be very bad as well, right? You need to think about the ramifications of what happens when your model gets something wrong. Now, for the example of the self-driving car, maybe it could take the confidence level of what it thinks is in front of you and maybe work that into who's behind you. So at least if you do slam on the brakes for no reason, you can make sure there's not someone riding on your, on your tail who's going to rear-end you or something like that. So th Think through what happens when your model is incorrect, because even a 99.9% .9 accuracy means that one times out of a thousand, you're going to get it wrong. And if people are using your system more than a thousand times, there's going to be some bad consequence that happens as a result. You need to wrap your head around what that result is and how you want to deal with it. The second type is a false negative. And for example, you might uh, have breast cancer, but fail to detect it. You may have misclassified it as being benign instead of malignant. Somebody dies if you get that wrong, okay? So think very closely about how your system is going to be used and the caveats that you put in place and the, the fail-safes and the backups that you have to make sure that if you have a system that is known to produce errors under some conditions, you are dealing with those in a responsible way. Another example of a false negative would be thinking that there's nothing in front of you in your self-driving car when in fact there is. Maybe it doesn't detect the car that stopped at a stoplight in front of you. This has also happened to me. <laughs> uh, what happens then? If, you're, if the driver is not alert, you crash into the car in front of you, and that's really bad. Again, people can die, okay? So people are very eager to apply deep learning to different situations in the real world, but often the real-world consequences of getting something wrong is a life-and-death matter, quite literally. So you need to really, really, really think about how your system is being used and make sure that the, your superiors and the people who are actually rolling this out to the world understand the consequences of what happens when things go wrong and the real odds of things going wrong. You know, you can't oversell your systems as being totally reliable because I promise you they're not. There can also be hidden biases in your system. So just because the artificial neural network you've built is not human does not mean that it's inherently fair and unbiased. Remember, your model is only as good as the data that you train it with. So let's take an example. If you're going to build a neural network that can try to predict whether somebody gets hired or not just based on attributes of that person. Now, you, your model itself may be all pure and whatnot, but if you're feeding it training data from real humans that made hiring decisions, that training data is going to reflect all of their implicit biases. This is just one example. So you might end up with a system that is, in fact, racist or ageist or, uh, or sexist simply because the training data you provide it was made by people who have these implicit biases, who may not have even been fully aware of them at the time. Okay, so you need to watch out for these things. Simple things you can do, I mean, obviously, making an actual feature for this model that includes age or sex or race or religion would be a pretty bad idea, right? But I can see some people doing that. 
Uh, think twice before you do something like that. But even if you don't implicitly put in features that you don't want to consider as part of your model, there might be unintended consequences or dependencies in your features that you might not have thought about. For example, if you're feeding in years of experience to the system that predicts whether or not somebody should get a job interview, you're going to have an implicit bias in there, right? The years of experience will very definitely be correlated with the age of the applicant. So if your past training data had a bias toward, you know, white men in their 20s who are fresh out of college, your system is going to penalize more experienced candidates who might in fact be better candidates who got passed over simply because they were viewed as being too old by human people. So think deeply about whether the system you're developing has hidden biases and what you can do to at least be transparent about what those biases are. Another thing to consider is, is the system you just built really better than a human? So if you're building a deep learning system that the people in your sales department or your management or your investors really want to sell as something that can replace jobs and save people or save companies money rather, you need to think about whether the system you're selling really is as good as a human. And if it's not, what are the consequences of that? For example, you can build deep learning systems that perform medical diagnoses and you might have a very eager sales rep who wants to sell that as being better than a human doctor. Is it really? What happens when your system goes wrong? Do people die? That would be bad. It would be better to be insistent with your superiors that this system is only marketed as a supplementary tool to aid doctors in making a decision and not as a replacement for human beings making a decision that can affect life or death. Again, self-driving car is another example where if you get it wrong, if your self-driving car isn't actually better than a human being and someone puts your car on autopilot, it can actually kill people. So I see this happening already, you know, where self-driving cars are being oversold. And there are a lot of edge cases in the world still where self-driving cars just can't cut it where a human could. And uh, I think that's very dangerous. Also think about unintended applications of your research. So let me tell you a story because this has actually happened to me more than once. Sometimes you develop something that you think is a good thing that will be used for positive use in the real world, but it ends up getting twisted by other people into something that is destructive. And that's something else you need to think about. So let me tell you a story. So you need to think about how the technology you're developing might be used in ways that you never anticipated. And can those usages be in fact malicious? This has actually happened to me a couple of times. I'm not talking theoretically here. And this isn't just limited to deep learning. It's really an issue with machine learning in general or really any new powerful technology. Sometimes our technology gets ahead of ourselves as a species, you know, socially. Let me tell you one story. So this isn't, isn't actually related to deep learning, but one of the first things I built in my career was actually a military flight simulator and training simulator. Its idea was to simulate combat in sort of a virtual reality environment in order to train our soldiers to better preserve their own lives and you know come out of the battlefield safely. I felt that was a positive thing. Hey, I'm saving the lives of soldiers. But after a few years, this same technology I made ended up being used in a command and control system. It was being used to help commanders actually visualize how to actually roll out real troops and actually kill real people. I wasn't okay with that, and I left the industry, in part because of that stuff. A more relevant example, back when I worked at Amazon.com, I was one of the, I mean, I don't want to take too much credit for this because the people who came up with the ideas were before me, but I was one of the early people actually implementing recommendation algorithms and personalization algorithms on the internet, taking your user behavior on the internet and distilling that down into recommendations for content to show you. And that ended up being sort of the basis that got built upon over the years that ultimately led to things like Facebook's targeting algorithms is another example of that. And, you know, when I look at how people are using fake news and fake accounts on social media to try to spread their political beliefs or, you know, some ulterior motive that may be financially driven and not really for the benefit of humanity, um, I don't feel very good about that. You know, I mean, the technology that I created at the time just to sell more books, which seemed harmless enough, ended up getting twisted into something that really changed the course of history in ways that might be good or bad, depending on your political leanings. So, again, remember that if you actually have a job in deep learning and machine learning, you can go anywhere you want to. If you find yourself being asked to do something that's morally questionable, you don't have to do it. You can find a new job tomorrow. OK, I mean, this is a really hot field. And at the time, by the time you have real world experience in it, the world's your oyster. You know, if you find yourself being asked to be doing something that's morally questionable, you can say no. Someone else will hire you tomorrow, I promise you, if, if you're any good at all. So 
I see this happening a lot lately. There's a lot of people publishing research about using neural networks to crack people's passwords or to, um, you know, illustrate how it can be used for evil, for example, by trying to predict people's sexual orientation just based on a picture of their face. I mean, this can't go anywhere good, guys. What are you trying to show by actually publishing this sort of a research? So think twice before you publish stuff like that. Think twice before you implement stuff like that for an employer because your employer only cares about making money, about making a profit. They are less concerned about the moral implications about the technology you're developing to deliver that profit. And people will see what you're building out there, and they will probably take that same technology, those same ideas, and twist it into something you may not have considered. So I just want you to keep these ideas and these concerns in the back of your head because you are dealing with new and powerful technologies here. And it's really up to us as technologists to try to steer that technology in the right direction and use it for the good of humanity and not for the detriment of humanity. Sounds very, very high level, high horse preachy, I know, but these are very real concerns. And there are you know, a lot of people out there that share my concerns. So. So please consider these concerns as you delve into your deep learning career.